Our next session is Transitioning Clinical Experts into High-Performing Leaders. Our speaker is Julie Polson. She is Imaging Clinical Manager at... Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Coeur d'Alene Medical Center in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She has worked her way through the ranks of imaging over the last 20 years. Julie has an undergraduate degree from Gonzaga University in Organizational Leadership and is currently working on her MBA from Gonzaga University. She recently spoke at the Society of Interventional Radiology on process improvements with imaging. Julie spent three years living in the Ukraine and New Zealand where she had an opportunity to view healthcare from a completely different perspective. She, en she enjoys camping, hiking, hunting, fishing with her family. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Julie Polson. Good morning. How is everybody? All righty. This is my first time to Nashville. I'm quite enjoying it. It's a pretty city. Today, um, I'm just going to take some time to really look at how are we mentoring the new leaders within imaging. And probably as a healthcare, we probably don't do this as well as we probably could. So we're just going to take a look at how is everyone mentoring the new leaders within your organization. And I'll just share a quick little story about myself. It's probably pretty typical of how each one of you became leaders within your organizations. So I was strong clinically, which is typically how we have a tendency to promote techs and nurses is based on their clinical experience. I like to think that somebody saw some leadership potential at the time, um, but we'll see. So what happened was the first time I'm in a leadership role, I'm asked to hire a new employee. So I do. I look through the resumes. I look at their clinical history. I look at all the things that we're needing just clinically. But to be honest, I don't think I took into account team fit. What are the dynamics? Really, what is that person looking for as clearly as I should have? And so this new employee comes on their very first day. It's the very first employee I've ever hired. And I like big city county trauma hospitals. That's where I've spent a large percentage of my time. And so I take this new employee up to the trauma um, room and have a particularly difficult trauma that day. And this poor new employee is plastered against the wall. He is terrified of what's going on in this room. Kind of at that moment, I got a quick clue that this may be a problem. We'll see where this goes. So I decide after the trauma to take him downstairs. We'll just do some chest x-rays, some abdomens, maybe a little barium, calm things down a little bit, talk to him. And so we get through our morning, and I'm going to get him to lunch, which where I was working at the time, lunch was somewhat debatable whether you got it. But on his first day, he's definitely going to get to lunch. Well, this new employee goes to lunch, and guess what happens? <laughs> Never comes back. <laughs> And so you can imagine, as a new leader, first I'm horrified, thinking, oh my goodness. And then now, all these years later, I look back at that story, and I, I do kind of chuckle a little bit at myself. I still feel bad for the poor employee, don't get me wrong, but I kind of look back and go, I learned a lot of lessons from that first experience, let me tell you. And if I ever saw that employee again, I'd probably thank him for realizing that this was not going to be a good fit and that they chose to make a decision. We could have talked about it maybe a little bit, and it wouldn't have been so traumatic uh, for him and I. So it took me a while to hire a new employee after that, as you can imagine. <laughs> so that's kind of was my typical experience into leadership, was really promoted into that position, and then just a hands-off approach. And then it became this trial by error along the way. And how many of you guys have found that that's been your experience or what you've even done? Yeah, I think it's pretty typical. I don't think my story is any exception to the room. And you were all too quick to know that he didn't come back. So <laughs> I might not be the only one at that point. So some of the questions are, how are we taking new leaders within our organizations and equipping them for their new roles? Are we really being hands off? Or are we really taking a strategic approach to how we're mentoring and training these new leaders? So if you're a new leader within the room, which I think most people, since I've talked to people over the last couple of days, that may not be the experience, but you know, 
the takeaways today hopefully will be apl applicable for you. The objectives really are to establish an overall strategy for new leaders and then to really give them some behavioral questions and some tools in a behavioral sense of how they're approaching their leadership and then to really define the leadership essentials in long and short term goals. One of the books I just recently read is, and I have no vested interest in this book whatsoever, was Gallup's new book, The 12 Elements of a Great Manager. How many of you use Gallup as your either patient or employee satisfaction? So a few people within here. I would highly recommend the book to anybody, whether you use that survey tool or not, because of the elements within it truly on employee engagement. Um, and it's been a great book. I will bring in quite a few concepts today. I'm not going to go into depth in those concepts. You can go to different organizations or consultants to really get them in depth, but it's just some examples of how to approach um, a strategically what you're doing for those new employees. We happen to use, um, how many of you use Studer's pillars in, within your organizations? Probably most people, yeah. And we do too. So these are the pillars that you're familiar with and what falls underneath them. And really, what's nice about using this, even if you don't use it within your organization, but just taking the concept is Studer says that what they find from these pillars is that it helps organizations to understand both their goals and their current position with respect to those goals on a system-wide basis. And then provides the framework for an evaluation process so all leaders really are established um, compared against established matrix, and it keeps the organization balanced in their short and long-term goals. And it's nice because it lays the framework for evaluations, agendas, communications, work planning, those kinds of things. So it's really a nice concept, and it's a good framework to help that new leader, you know, where are they headed, instead of that crisis management of the moment that we all get caught up into. Um, so whether you use this or not, it's a nice framework. I'm going to use it as the framework today because, again, I think it's the way to go with the new leaders. So one of the things is, is strategic planning. Individuals and teams enact strategic leadership when they think, act, and influence in ways that sustain the future of the organization. How many of you truly take your leadership team and put it aside a dedicated day or two each year to do strategic planning. How many of you really do that? So really just a few within the room take that dedicated